The time at the tone, 8 o'clock. Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Tonight, from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark cards bring you a true story from the life of Edith Cavill, starring Miss Helen Hayes on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. And here is our distinguished host, Mr. Lionel Barrymore. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Hallmark Hall of Fame. We are especially honored tonight as we welcome one of the most accomplished ladies of the American theater, Miss Helen Hayes. Always a generous friend and champion of the nursing profession, Miss Hayes will portray the role of a nurse tonight. For our story is that of Edith Cavill, the courageous heroine of World War I. Now here is Frank Goss. For words to express your thoughtfulness and designs to express your good taste, always look for Hallmark on the back of the cards you send or receive. For that Hallmark is a symbol of quality all instantly recognized. To everyone, everywhere. The Hallmark on the back of a card means You care enough to send the very best. Lionel Barrymore appears by arrangement with MGM, who celebrate their 30th anniversary at your favorite theater with their new color picture in Cinemascope, Rose Marie, starring Anne Blythe, Howard Keel, and Fernando Lamas. And now Mr. Barrymore brings you transcribed tonight's exciting story on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. The Great War is on. One of the first countries to feel the choking tightness of German occupation is Belgium. The open moorlands and woods of scrub oak are now dotted with barbed wire entanglements. And in the city of Brussels, life has become a harsh ordeal. belongs to everyone, even those who can't see. Oh. Who are you, Matron? My name is Edith Cavill. English? Yes, but I've lived and worked here in Brussels for eight years. Oh, yes, yes, I've heard of you. You came here to train nurses. Well, we all need nurses these days. What side are you on now? The side of humanity. Where am I? L'Ecole Belge d'Infermières Diplomé. This is no military hospital. What am I doing here? You were found wandering in the fields outside the city. They brought you here, unconscious. Nurse Cavill, who brought me here? The people who found you. Are they, too, on the side of humanity? Yes. Where are the Germans? Right outside, all about us. Do they know I'm here? Not yet. I must leave here. I must get out of here. Quiet, quiet. Don't you understand? I'm an English soldier. I lost my company in the woods. If the bush finds me, they'll shoot me. You were carried here in peasant clothes. Yes, sister. 
The officer in charge of the German military police wishes to see you. He is waiting in your office. I'll be along in a minute, sister. I will tell him. Help me, please, in the name of God. Help me, Matron. Lie back. Rest. You will need all of your strength. Tonight you will cross the border into Holland with some others like you. I promise you. Now, rest. God bless you, Edith Carroll. God bless you all of your days. Good morning, Herr Bergen. I, uh... I hope I did not take you away from anything important. Your concern for my time is most appreciated. That is not why I have come, Nurse Carroll. The new military governor is a most efficient man. I'm sure Baron von der Lanken is most efficient. I heard of the execution this morning. Yes, a straggler from the French army was found hiding in the home of one of his loyalists. In this kind of situation, we had no choice. It uh, has occurred to von der Lanken that one particular order issued some months ago should be re-emphasized. And which order is that, Herr Bergen? As the responsible head and directress of this hospital, one that concerns you very much. The names of all male patients over 18 years of age must be reported immediately. Furthermore, such patients must present themselves to German police headquarters upon discharge. Oh, yes, Herr Bergen, I remember that order. You explained it to me in detail when you first arrived in Brussels. Mm. I explain it to you again, Carol. This hospital would be an excellent hiding place for enemy soldiers who, for some reason or other, become lost or separated from their own units and uh, find themselves behind our lines. My hospital? A hiding place, Oberleutnant? Uh, a temporary hiding place where a wound could be treated, an illness attended to, money furnished, a guide provided, and a trip to the border of Holland arranged for. The last patient discharged from here did not report to police headquarters. Oh, dear, I am sorry, Oberleutnant. I distinctly told him to do so. I told him exactly how to get to your office. Certainly the Oberleutnant does not hold me responsible if a young man leaves here and loses his way. <laughs> We play an interesting game, Carol. But a dangerous one for you. The consequences of any indiscreet actions on your part would be most disastrous. You would be shot to death. <laughs> the loser in this game has much to lose. Good day. Good day, Herr Bergen. Sister, I didn't see you. Matron, you must not do it anymore. You must stop. That man is dangerous. Sister? I know you have been working with Philippe Bach, taking these stragglers in and giving them money and guides and seeing that they get over the border. Does anyone else here know? I am the only one, Matron. Sister, you must forget anything you have seen or heard. I beg you to Sister, stop. Sister, if one of these men were turned away from here and caught, he would be shot. How? Can I stop when there are lives to be saved? I received your message about the new arrival. Where is he? Waiting over there. His name is Georges Gaston Kien. He's a French officer. He escaped from a German labor camp near Moberg three days ago. How do we know that this is true? We must take his word for it and trust him. He has been hiding in the woods from the German patrols. He wants to cross the border with the others tonight. So his Germans are becoming very clever. Did you treat him? No, he came to us unharmed. I prefer a wounded man. Let's have to be a German spy. Let me talk to him. Certainly. Captain. Captain. How did you happen to come to Nurse Cavill? And sir. A group of peasants I met near Mons told me Nurse Cavell has been very kind to fugitive soldiers. Uh, who is this man? Your friend, Captain. The guide I spoke of. He does not sound like a friend. Mademoiselle, you will what still help What is your company? 22nd Field Artillery, Regimental Headquarters Battery. Commanding officer. André Jean Placente. Am I not to be trusted? I am a French officer. If they find me in Brussels, I will be shot. Matron, it is your duty to help me Keep escape. Keep your voice down. May I speak with you? Of course. 
It is difficult to ascertain the truth of this matter. I do not approve of this man, of his hesitations, his manners. You are the one in the most jeopardy. But I will do as you direct. I could not deny a man who says he needs help. The Germans are not unaware of this quality in you. They would take advantage of it if it served their purposes. I know you are talking of what to do with me. I have a wife and two children in Paris. I want to be with them again. Think of that, if nothing else, mademoiselle. I've told you the truth about myself. My life is in your hands. Take the captain with the others, Philippe. All right, mon capitaine. That way, I will be right along. Oui. I will wait for you. It goes late. God speed you, Philippe. He did not even thank you. Dear God in heaven, I know that if one comes to me and asks for help and I am capable of giving it, then I am fortunate. Because serving such is an opportunity to serve you. If I should deny that help, then I am unworthy of you and unworthy of humanity. As you give me your divine assistance every day, help me, dear Lord. Help me to help all those who need my help and not be fearful of what may befall me for giving it. Help me, Lord. Help me. just a moment, we return to the second act of the Hallmark Hall of Fame. Something happened today that made me realize more than ever that good intentions have to be helped along. My 13-year-old niece had a birthday the other day. As she opened her presents, her mother said, now you must be sure and write your thank you notes right away. Well, since I received my thanks in person, I was pleasantly surprised to find a thank you note in the mail today. And my thoughts went back to the time we were being trained by our own mothers with almost the same words. As I looked at the note in my hand, I decided the difference was not in the training, not in the children, but in this matter of receiving help along the way. My niece had used a hallmark note. A beautiful design filled the cover, and she confined her writing to a simple sentence on the inside. The whole effect was charming and spontaneous, much more so than our labored notes of years ago when we were faced with a whole blank page to fill up with thanks. These hallmark everyday notes come in a wide variety of designs, Designs that really serve as inspiration to young and old alike because they're styled by those same famous Hallmark artists who know how to express beauty and good taste in color and design. You'll find Hallmark notes at all stores that feature Hallmark cards. The cards you send when you care enough to send the very best. And now Lionel Barrymore brings you the second act of our true story of Nurse Edith Cavill, starring Miss Helen Hayes. Edith Cavill quietly worked for man and prayed to God for help, the ghastly storm of war raged across the face of Europe. We come from the first shock of attack and infuriated France and England fought back against the Prussian war machine. But no allied offensive thrust was without repercussion in the occupied zones. And the proud military might of Germany vented its anger and frustration in many ways. at the sundown, other than German occupation personnel, will automatically be considered hostile and shot without question. Oh, 
Kalau nak tante lagi ni ya. Oh ya. Ya. Ya bol Baron von der Lanken. Ya, I assure you, there will be no more stragglers harbored in this city or escaping into Holland. No, I have taken the strictest steps. Yeah. My men have been instructed to knock on the door when they... Oh. Well, at last. Hello, Bergen. I have some interesting information for you. About Nurse Edith Cavell? Of course. Sit down, George. Sit down. I have been expecting you. Philippe, I'm so glad you're back. Then it is worth coming back. How did it go? Everyone in our group crossed safely, including Georges Jean. <sighs> Some others were not so successful. English soldiers, they were shot. Oh. The entire border is now patrolled. Double guard. There is not a foot of it that is not under scrutiny 24 hours a day. A recent order issued by our esteemed new military governor. I came to say goodbye. What? Goodbye, Philippe? I. There was a struggle with one of the patrols, and a German officer recognized me. I can no longer remain in Brussels. My time is up now. I will escape to England in safety. Your time is near. Here at the hospital, this cannot continue indefinitely. Matron, come with me tonight. I will take you over to safety. You have done more than your share. Thank you, dear Philippe. But my place is here in the hospital. There is so much to be done. I thought you would say something like that. Mademoiselle, you are a great woman. Everywhere for you. Captain Kian is back. What? I saw him with my own eyes not half an hour ago. I spoke to him. He claimed to have seen French officials in Holland who gave him money to return here and act as an intelligence officer for them. He asked me to tell you that. Well, this is plausible. Not so plausible, matron. He is lying. He did not know that I had seen him a moment before stepping out of the office of Oberleutnant Bergen. <laughs> Are you certain of that, sister? I am positive. Captain Kien is a spy for the Germans. Help me, sister. Yes. Many people other than myself are involved. They have donated money to help. I have kept records of their donations and exactly where every bit of it has gone. I thought one day there might be an accounting. Oh, this? All oh, this? Yes, yes. It would in itself be enough to send you before the firing squad. Hurry, we must burn it all. We cannot allow the others to be involved in my difficulties. Hurry, sister. Hurry. Asleep, Monsieur Perriant? Asleep. <laughs> Sleep well, Monsieur. How can you work? How can you do anything? Shh, sister, he sleeps for the first time in many days. I want you to make me a promise, sister. Watch Monsieur Perriant closely, in case I am not around. He is a very ill man. Oh, yes, yes, of course I promise. But, Matron, think of yourself. This one And remember the important obligations of your profession. Always. Oh, please, Matron. Oh. Oh. He is here for you, Matron. Ah, Nurse Carroll. Good morning, Fräulein. You, uh, 
You look somewhat tired, Nurse Campbell. Have you been working too much? I cannot complain, Oberleutnant. No, you would not do that, I'm certain. Of course you know why I have come here. I know, Herr Bergen. Yes, Matron. Look about you at your beloved hospital. Keep it well in your mind. You will never see it again. We go. <laughs> Prisoner will stand. <coughs> Nurse Edith Cavill. Yes. Them find a Mannschaften zu führen. You speak no German. No, I do not. I have just named for you that section of the German penal code under which you have been brought into this court. It deals, Miss Cavill, with the violation of assisting enemy soldiers. It is treason. Have you anything to say? What do you expect me to say in this military court, Baron von der Lanken? I have here before me evidence that you are guilty of crime. Do you admit it? I am guilty of no crime. You have harbored enemy soldiers in your hospital. You have provided them with food, money, and guides who lead them to a neutral border. We have the sworn statement here of a man named George Gaston Quint, who says this is true. I do not deny it. <laughs> I am guilty of violating your penal code. Yes, I am guilty of wanting and hoping and striving every day to preserve life. I am a nurse. I cannot distinguish between race or creed. If I did, it would be a violation of my profession. I owe to every man my service and my training and my help. Yeah. Treason is punishable by death. Let the sentence be carried out as quickly as possible. <laughs> No tears, my dear. No, no, no. This is no time for tears. We, we all hope and, and pray something will happen. The American consul and, and the Spanish consul have, have been moving heaven and earth. Sister, sister, it is useless. I know all about that. The sentence will be carried out. I'm glad they allowed you this time. You can tell everyone goodbye for me. All of the nurses at the hospital... Tell them I love them and wish them well in their life work. Brighter days will come for all. The war will not last forever. But while it does last, ask them to remember how badly they are needed in the hospitals and what opportunities they have to find themselves. Will you do that for me, sister? Yes. Tell them that everyone has been most kind to me here in prison. I have no regrets. If I had it to do over again, I would do just as I did. So... Time. Goodbye, little sister. Goodbye. Handkerchief, Matron? No, thank you. I can face my death. As you have faced your life? Perhaps, Oberleutnant. Our little game ends here, Cabell. I have won. Yes, Oberleutnant. But what have you won? I... No, 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 please, don't be angry. I have no hatred and no bitterness toward anyone. Auf Wiedersehen, Mädchen. Achtung! Fertig!
Lieutenant Cavill fell before the German firing squad on October the 12th, 1915. And from that moment on, her name became forever a symbol of the highest tradition of nursing throughout the world. Now here is Frank Goss. In Holland, there's a superstition that a stork brings good luck to a household when it nests on the rooftop. And here in America, a stork means good luck too, for it symbolizes the arrival of a brand new baby. What a happy day that is. And just as for other happy occasions, you'll find there are Hallmark cards designed especially for you, as a friend of the family, to share in that happiness and increase it. There are Hallmark cards to send to the parents, ones to welcome the new baby himself, and even ones to send to the proud grandparents. And in the fine stores that feature Hallmark cards, you'll also find especially beautiful Hallmark designs to announce the birth of the new baby, as well as gay Hallmark notes for the young mother to use in thanking friends for baby's gifts. So when it's time to welcome a new baby, remember there's a Hallmark card designed to help you express your feelings. And as always, the Hallmark on the back of your card will say, you care enough to send the very best. And now here again is Lionel Barrymore. Helen, it was certainly a great honor to have you with us on the Hallmark Hall of Fame tonight. Thank you for a most inspiring performance. Thank you. And it was a great pleasure for me to be here, Lionel. I, I think you're to be congratulated for the kind of programs you've been having on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. For instance, I imagine that this is the first time that many in our audience have heard of Edith Cavill and the true story of her heroism. Like all nurses dedicated to their profession, Edith Cavill combined the qualities of being a woman and being a nurse so beautifully that her life story is a shining example of greatness. I'm sure any young woman who heard you tonight, Helen, would have a strong desire to become a nurse. I surely hope so, Lionel. I can think of no greater profession, no one in which a person could better develop all the qualities of body and soul that make for a happy life. If, as the result of my performance, just one girl would decide to dedicate herself to becoming a nurse, then I should be very happy and very grateful to the makers of Hallmark Cards for the opportunity of reaching that one future nurse. Good night, Lionel. Good night, Helen Hayes. Next week, we honor one of the most remarkable men in the annals of history. His prophecies, made in the 16th century, are today still coming true. His name, Nostradamus. Until next week, then, this is Lionel Barrymore saying good night. <laughs> announcement from the makers of Hallmark Cards. Boys and girls of high school age can win big cash prizes for themselves and for their schools in the Hallmark Hall of Fame contest. See the March 10th issues of Scholastic Magazines for full details on the rules and cash prizes for the Hallmark Hall of Fame contest. Look for Hallmark Cards that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember, a Hallmark card when you carry enough to send the very best. Our producer-director is William Prude. Our transcribed script tonight by E. Jack Newman. Featured in our cast were Bryna Rayburn, Everett Sloan, Guy Rep, Louis Van Ruten, Ted Osborne, and James Dukas. Listen also to the Hallmark Hall of Fame on television next Sunday when we honor St. Patrick in a true and inspiring story of the Irish patron saint. This is Frank Goss saying good night to you until next week at the same time when we'll present a true story from the life of Nostradamus. On March 21st, the story of Edmund Burke, starring Mr. Herbert Marshall on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. This is the CBS Radio Network. This is KMBC, Kansas City, Missouri.